This is a Tuya ERS-10TZBVK-AA, or better known as a Zigbee Smart Knob. Now this is a wireless rotary knob that basically allows you to control all sorts of things. You can control blinds, fans, thermostats, or my personal favorite and the project of the day, LED lights. So pretty much anything that can be affected by a variable being changed, this thing can you know do stuff with. Now it does have a few key parameters that you can use in order to make changes to whatever you want. For example, you have action, which is just pushing the button. It can distinguish which way you're turning the knob, left or right. And then when you do turn the knob, it actually registers how many steps you took. And it'll even return a value of the speed of which you turned the knob. Now there's other things like battery and, and quality of connection. None of that matters for the project that I'm doing today which is controlling LED lights. Now this knob actually has two different modes it runs in. One is called command and the other is called event mode. Now this entire project and video is all about the command mode because it gives you all the different variables like you know how fast you spun the device and what those steps were, etc. So, you know, moving forward, like if you want to recreate this, you can triple tap this to change the modes and if something's not working, it might be in the wrong mode cuz the other mode kind of sucks. Maybe, I don't know, didn't explore it. Just saying, it's there and it won't work for what I'm doing today. Now, the reason why I actually went out looking for something like this, especially something with Zigbee, is mainly because I just installed, I completed a project of adding a bunch of accent lights to the top and the bottom of all the cabinets in my kitchen. Gotta be honest, I love the way they look. It's really cool, but when it comes to controlling them, I was, I felt limited. Like I installed a panel in my kitchen and the panel's great. It's just sometimes a little slow, so maybe I need a faster panel. Standing there for like a few seconds for it to reload, and, and, and I mean, you know, it's there, but it's not great. Also, the options that I have on the dashboard on that panel, I really drastically need to redesign because it's just really limited by what I could use it for. And the only other option is to use the app on my phone, which I can just go through and manually change things which is just not really something I wanna do. So I go through all the work of getting these accent lights installed. They're cool, I like them, I've set up automations, I have motion control. You know, I've done a lot of things with them, but still, overall, wasn't satisfied by just being able to control them manually in the event I actually want to control them manually. So that's why I went looking for this. And this thing is cheap. Like $17, links in the description, $17 cheap. Of course I ordered one because this is exactly kind of the basic idea of what I want. I wanna be able to push a button, I wanna be able to rotate a knob and that's really just it. I had a bunch of plans in my mind how to do the modes and how what I'm gonna do with it but I just needed the device in order to be able to do it and when I got it, I was extremely disappointed because I hadn't really set it up the way I am in this video but the first setup, just was terrible. I used the built-in home automation screens where you like create a new automation, you know, like you would with the normal Zigbee button, you create a new automation, if this, do this, that sort of thing. And when I set all that up, it wasn't reliable, it wasn't fast, sometimes it would just work, not work, sometimes, I mean, it was all over the board. I, I literally was just like, I put it down, I was like, this was a waste of $17. As it was right out of the box with really basic home assistant configuration, it wasn't usable. However, I can sometimes be obsessed and I really wanted this to work and I wanted to make sure that I got everything out of it that I wanted it to do. So this is not an exaggeration. Over the course of the next 30, maybe 40 hours of actually scripting, coding, whatever in YAML, I finally came up with a code, script, automation set, everything that I need to make this thing now what I consider to be a near perfect solution for a rotating knob that I can stick anywhere in my kitchen, probably on my, my fridge, and control my RGB lights. Yes, I can copy, paste, modify, and kind of look at YAML code and stuff, and usually through trial and error figure stuff out, but I'm not a coder, I don't know this, I don't know how to create from scratch. So that's why there was 30 to 40 hours of doing this, because I was not only learning how to do it, most of the things that I was doing, but I had a lot of error in my trials. So let me tell you my goals. And, and I thought they were kind of simple. It took a little bit to implement them, but these are my goals. First of all, the button click. I wanted the button click to change modes. I wanted a total of five different modes. Actually it was four, but then I changed it to five. Mode zero is just off. If it's on mode zero, 
turn the LEDs off, boom, done, simple. Click it again, turn it to mode one, and then I'm in Kelvin mode. That's the temperature, like the cool and the warm. I'm in Kelvin mode, so I can change the temperature of the lights, not have the RGB thing going on, just the temperature, and I can use this knob while it's in the Kelvin mode, and I can change it from warm to cool as I want to. Then the third mode, which is named mode two because I started at zero, the third mode is still Kelvin, but this time I'm changing the brightness value of that Kelvin. So in Kelvin mode, I can go through and I can make it the whatever color I want to, and then I hit the knob again, and then I can actually change the brightness of that. The next mode after that turns it into RGB. That's where I get all the colors. And this actually is what took most of the time. It was surprisingly more difficult than I would have ever expected, but um, essentially when you're in that mode with your RGB, you rotate the knob, it rotates through a spectrum of 1,530 different variables of RGB codes. This sounds stupid, but because I'm stupid, I didn't really know a better way to do this. I figured I don't know how to calculate math and do all this thing to where you, know, you go from red to green and all that other stuff. I know how RGB works, but I just didn't know how to make that happen with a rotary knob. I mean, it's like how? So my ridiculous Neanderthal level thinking was just like, hey, you have a spectrum and you go, these three numbers, which are G, B, red, green, blue, they go from zero to 255. And as you go through it, one lowers, one you know goes up and et cetera. So why not make every single one in the spectrum between red to you know the, the other end of the red, right? Just be a number, which happened to be 1,530 different numbers. Each single one I defined as a variable to say, hey, if it's on number 900, that just happens to be this RGB code. I'm going on a tangent here and I really don't wanna go through and explain everything that I did on all this code because one, I know it's super boring. Two, I know I'm an idiot and it would sound really stupid. And three, I know you probably just don't actually care. The point is because of those variables, the way I did it and the way I made it, depending on whether you go left or right, which that's programmed into the script, it'll register left or right. And by the way, it'll take into account speed. It will go through and cycle through the entire spectrum of all of those RGB variables that I put into the system. And for the hell of it, I made it that if you're rotating it right and you, you end up at the end of the spectrum, it'll actually start back over and loop and it stops on red and, and, and starts on red. So it's like seamless and that's left or right. So that's kind of cool anyway. Doesn't do that with Kelvin. Okay, I didn't make it like that. I wanted it either bright and then you stop or you have to go all the way back, but whatever. So naturally after you go through and you select your color, the next mode will allow you to change the brightness of that color. So all makes sense. This is why I have five. You have off, then you have the different colors, warmths, whatever, and brightness for each. Now this knob, of course, when properly configured is super easy to use, right? It's surprisingly fast and it's reliable. In the different example footages that I took, I used the knob button to change the mode by clicking it. And then after that, I adjust each thing related to that mode just by rotating the knob. That automation that I wrote for a home assistant allows it to know if I'm turning the knob left or right, thus allowing me to do things like turning the brightness up or down. Or of course, as I mentioned before, the Kelvin and the RGB colors. Now there was definitely a whole lot of like math involved in this because the values the knob returns are like the minimum's 13 and it can go up to like 60s and 70s depending on how fast or how much you spin it. Also, if you spin it really fast, it has like a multiplier, like, hey, it did it quickly, which actually works out really, really well, especially in the RGB spectrum thing, because maybe you don't want to go through 1500 really slow. So if you were to go through and rotate the knob and just flick it right really fast while you're in the RGB thing, it'll allow you to quickly cycle through and just jump ahead through that spectrum of colors. That way you're not sitting there and spinning the freaking thing for like an hour just trying to get it to turn blue. The way my script worked is that it kind of mathed it up. Like if you're spinning a little faster, it'll multiply it by this. A little bit more faster, it'll multiply it by that. That way it's very comfortable and user-friendly to use when you're spinning it. And it's easy to catch on that if you spin this thing faster, things are gonna go fast. Like you can turn the light up really fast if you want to, or you can kind of sort of inch it up if you really want to do that as well. But the end result after all of this with my brand new shiny kitchen accent lights, which by the way, I'm totally proud of, and I'm kind of sort of showing them off here because I think they look really cool, albeit slightly too bright because now I think that they're basically my kitchen lights because they're so bright. But with all this said and done, now I can stick this knob on the side of my refrigerator, which is 
it's exactly where it's going to go. And I can adjust everything very easily with just this knob. That's not to say that my script in the future is going to change. That's not to say I'm not gonna make some tweaks, add some different features, explore you know more efficient ways to handle the stuff that I did in my code. Because again, dumb, first code, learned, here we are. But I just wanna add that there's one thing that I really, really, truly appreciate about this little bitty knob. And that is, it has magnets on the bottom. Yes, magnets. Like when I say I'm sticking it to my fridge, that's because the fridge is metal and this thing literally just sticks to it. I can pull it off, stick it on there, pull it off, stick it on there. Magnets on this make this thing amazing. Now in the box, it does come with like a little metal plate that you can screw into somewhere like a wall or whatever. That way you can stick this to that metal plate if you'd like, or you can just be like me and stick it to your fridge, whatever you wanna do you have options. So hey, now you know this thing can be totally awesome and maybe just perhaps you wanna recreate what I did. I don't blame you. I actually ordered two more because I have more ideas for this and more things to control. So let's do this. If you wanna do this, you're gonna to have to go a few different ways. Either one, create all of the code yourself, figure all of it out yourself and do everything yourself, which if you can do that and you want to do that, hey, more power to you. Your code's probably going to be way better than mine. Or in the description down below, I'm going to link to all of the code that I have. It's just copy and paste code. So it has all of my entities in there. You're going to have to understand how to look at the YAML and, and replace different entities. You're going to have to create helpers because you need helpers. There's five of them, four numbers and one text. Because again, the way I made this, is that it changes values of helpers and then other automations use the values of those helpers to manipulate the lights because I have a bunch of other stuff that also uses those numbers. So I didn't want to like, you know, directly control a light. I wanted to control a helper and then have everything else reference that helper, if that makes sense. Either way, all of the code that I did, including all the math and everything, uh, the five different modes, etc., all of that is gonna be included in the description down below. So that's option number two. Option number three, as I mentioned before, Nate, thank you very much for helping me through some of the tougher code on this. Uh, Nate made a blueprint that does all the light stuff that you can click on the link in the description. You can add that to your home assistant and then you can create a new automation using that blueprint to assign a light and actually I haven't looked at the blueprint, but there's other options, but it's all in a nice, easy to use user interface that allows you to do basically this with this specific knob and get the same reliable and consistent performance out of this rather than using the basic generic home assistant built in stuff that you would normally do if you bought something like this. Like this really does need special programming and just tweaking and stuff in order to actually be good because I hated it when I first got it. But once I coded everything right, I'm absolutely in love with it. And of course, I will link to this knob in the description down below. Now, if anybody here is watching and let's say you're going to use my code, my automations and all that other stuff, and you know more about YAML, which if you know anything about YAML, you probably know more about YAML than I do. And you have like ideas to make my coding better, more reliable, maybe find a bug, whatever the case may be, please let me know because I want to tweak this and make this better and improve upon it. And it's just going to be like an evolving thing for me. So if you have suggestions or something, please let me know what those changes are and I will absolutely look into it. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe below and have yourself a great day.